First and foremost, we were blessed with our second baby on September 24th, and it's a baby boy this time. And back to the mission. The mission for this presentation is WSI inter WS interoperability, the web services interoperability problem and its solution. Web services interoperability allows applications running on different platforms which use different languages, programming languages, to communicate with each other quite easily. For example, a BigPel component, a business process execution language component, can easily consume a web service which could, be, which could have been written in Java, .NET, or any other language. Similarly, we can come up with a mashup application that consumes web services from various providers written different web services written in different languages from various web services providers. But web services interoperability is easier said than implemented because of the number of open standards web services relies on. For example, SOAP, HTTP, WSDL, XML schema, etc. For example, let's say we are developing a web service in .NET using the Windows Communication Foundation and a web services client, a consumer of our .NET web service is written in Java and it uses the Apache CXF as its web services stack. Now if WCF implements SOAP version 1.1 and uh, WSDL version 1.1 and if Apache CXF implements SOAP version 1.2 and WSDL version 2.0 there is no guarantee that these two applications the provider and consumer applications can talk to each other because of the XML messages that get produced from the .NET web service could be different from what our web services client or consumer expects using Apache CXF because of the difference in the versions of SOAP and WSDL that these two stacks use. The interoperability problem gets exponentially bigger as we move on to the, all the web services standards and their versions. So WCF could implement different versions of the web services standards like WS addressing, WS security, etc. And Apache CXF might implement different versions of WS security, WS addressing, which will result in these two applications. The, uh, the interoperability problem for these two applications will grow in size with the combination of all these standards. And that's exactly where the WS interoperability organization steps in. WSI is a group of organizations like Microsoft, IBM, SAP, HP, Oracle, etc., whose goal is to provide a standard across the various web services specifications. And WSI does it by giving us profiles. A profile is nothing but a named set of version specifications. For example, the basic profile 1.1 covers HTTP 1.1, SOAP 1.1, WSDL 1.2, etc. What that means is if a particular web services stack says it's compliant with basic profile 1.1, that means it's compliant with a particular set of web services standards. And WSI also provides a, us with tools which can be used to test for compliance. So web services stacks like WCF and Apache CXF can use these tools which can analyze the messages, the SOAP messages or XML messages that get produced and consumed. These messages will be analyzed by the tools and they can generate compliance reports. So Apache CXF can run these tests and claim compliance against a particular profile. So if Apache CXF claims that it's compliant with basic profile 1.2 and WCF also claims that it is compliant with basic profile 1.2 then we can be pretty sure that these two applications can, web service applications can interoperate. If a new standard evolves, a new web services standard evolves, the WSI organization will make a decision to include this particular standard, a, version, a particular version of this standard, uh, and they will propose a new profile. For example, MTOM, the binary attachment standard for web services, and the WS addressing standards were introduced. WS addressing is used for asynchronous messaging. These two standards were introduced in the year 2010. And the WSI organization has come up with a new profile, user profile 1.2, which covers the MTOM and w, uh, WS addressing standards.
Another problem the WSI organization covers is ambiguity of the various web services standards. For example, if Apache CXF implements web services security in one way because it's it, the standards, the open standards are easy to misunderstand and misinterpret. So if Apache CXF implements WS security in one way and if WCF implements WS security in one way, then there is no way these two applications can authenticate or do any web services security related work. So the WSI organization provides guidelines that can be used by the stack developers to make sure any of these gaps are filled and they both are compliant. The WSI also provides several example implementations of various standards so the web services stack providers can look at the examples when they and use them when they implement their own web services stacks. To summarize, from this presentation, you have learned that the number of open standards that are used by web services make their goal of providing interoperability really difficult to implement. And the WSI organization comes to the rescue by providing us with profiles, which are named set of version specifications. WSI organization also provides us with tools and strong guidelines that will uh, fill in any gaps in the web services standards world and the tools can be used by web services stack providers and also our applications to make sure that we are compliant against a particular basic profile. In a future presentation I will show you how to configure these tools with our web services client or even on the web services provider site. Until then keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.